Hi, I'm Louise and today I'm going to show you how to make this fabulous drip cake. It's made of chocolate, it looks absolutely delicious and they're all the rage at the moment. You can make it for birthdays, celebrations or like this one, I've used mini eggs because it's for Easter. But doesn't matter what you put on it, just make sure it has lots of chocolate. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is make our bark and that is the shards of white chocolate that's going to go on the top of the cake right at the end. So I'm using white chocolate. You can use milk chocolate or dark chocolate if you want to. I do have some milk chocolate here, but that's to do the drips at the end when we're decorating the actual cake. So I'm going to put that to one side and I've got some tempered white chocolate here. Now, tempered chocolate, just really put it in the microwave for blasts of 20 to 30 seconds at a time and don't leave it until it's really really melted leave it so there's just a few little lumps and then as you stir it around the heat of the rest of the chocolate will melt those lumps and that's pretty much about tempered temperature so as you can see it's looking like custard really at the moment so that's my white chocolate I've also melted some candy melt pink candy melt okay so that's in there. This is my little um, microwavable candy melt pot. It's really, really good. You can just stick it in the microwave and it won't burn. So that's fantastic. And I've got my lovely mini eggs. Now I'm going to put a handful of these mini eggs into a bag. In fact, let's put two handfuls in. And of course, one for me. And if you've got any anger issues, or you've got somebody you're really, really upset with, now is the time to take it out on them because we get a rolling pin and we bash our mini eggs. Okay, brilliant. Now I've got a piece of greaseproof paper and I've just put it on a tray. And I'm going to take my white chocolate. Mmm. Now, not too thin. Don't spread the white chocolate too thin. If you want nice chunky bark. But try and get it into a rectangle shape. Now, really, you should just chuck it all on. But if you do chuck it all on, you won't get the lovely colours of these mini eggs. So, actually, before I chuck it all on, I'm going to just take some of them and just place them in my chocolate so that you can actually see some colour and then once you've done that just take the rest of them and literally just sprinkle mm -mm -mm. there's no rule to how much you never have too much and also all the dust at the bottom get that as well because it all adds to the decoration perfect now you can also add sprinkles if you want to. I've got some lovely star sprinkles here. That's a really good idea to colour theme your bark. So if you're having, I don't know, like a red, white and blue party, then you can use red, white and blue sprinkles. It would look fantastic. But I'm just basically putting in anything that I've got here. Mm. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is take my candy melts. Now again, this is another opportunity for me to add some colour. So I'm putting pink in, but you can put any colour you like. Now I'm just dripping it. This is quite thick, but I like that because it makes it look really, really chunky. And I'm just dripping it over. Mm. There. So you have a beautiful mess of chocolate, really. And now I'm going to put this, you can put it in the fridge or you can put it in the freezer. If you put it in the freezer, probably about half an hour is all you need. If you put it in the fridge, I'd leave it overnight. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to snap it. Now you could take a knife and you could make really, really sharp shards, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to snap it. I think it looks more natural. Sit. Make sure they're not too big and make sure they're not too regimented too. There you go. And then that's going to be the bark that goes on the top of our cake. And what you'll find is these little pieces here, they really don't have any other use other than to be tested. So there is your bark. 
So now for the fun part, we're going to put the three different colors on with buttercream. So I have a very tall cake here, as you can see. I actually baked two cakes and I stacked them one on top of the other. It's always good that when you're stacking them to keep checking to make sure they're at a right angle using your tall metal scraper. So I've completely covered it with buttercream. And as you can see, I've left the top and I actually put this in the freezer because I wanted it to be really, really hard. So it's much easier just now to level off the top with my knife as I go around it's really hard I can get myself a nice straight edge remember we don't have to worry too much about it being absolutely immaculate because it's going to have chocolate all dripped all over it but that's pretty much as even as we need to make it Okay, good. So, as I say, this is really, really hard and it's really, really cold. It's so important, I can't explain how important it is that this cake is freezing, freezing cold because that's how we do the magical drip trick, okay? But, first of all, with buttercream. So, we're going to use three different colours of buttercream. Let me move this. I've already put two of the colours into my big Savoy bags and I always use the freezer clips just to make sure that it doesn't ooze out the top. So I've got my green here, my green buttercream, and I've got a, a glass, as you can see, and put the bag over the top and it just acts, the glass acts as a third hand for you just to stable your bag as you're putting your buttercream in. All the way in and then my freezer bag I've forgotten it hold on a second freezer clip so clip on and now I have all three of my colors now just remember this if you're using the blue Savoy bags make sure you know which one's your yellow and which one's your green because when they're in the bags you can't tell the difference so I know this is my green one okay so my green goes at the bottom then my pink goes in the middle and my yellow goes at the top so scissors we're going to cut at the bottom of the bag cut at the bottom of the bag try and make the cuts about the same size all the way through so that all of our ends are the same width and then bring the cake back in okay so twist 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 your bag around until your buttercream is coming out the top and now what I'm going to do is go all the way around the bottom with my first color now don't worry if it's nice and neat. Don't worry if it's not nice and neat. It really doesn't matter. What's important here is that you cover every single little bit of your cake. We can't have any gaps because if you have any gaps, then you'll have gaps when we go around and smooth it out, okay? So just make sure that you're filling it all. all. Now let's do the next one. I'll just say make sure that there's no gaps. Now can you see here I have a gap there and that's going to cause me problems when I'm going smoothing. So go over the gap. It's fine to have too much buttercream but it's not allowed to not have enough. So, you're probably looking at this right now thinking that is not going to turn into a beautifully covered buttercream cake, but I can promise you it is. Okay. Third last colour, our yellow.
I'm running out of yellow. Ah! Take your bag and then just make sure that you can squish all of the buttercream right down to the bottom. Now, luckily, we've run out at the top one because actually everything will be moving up as we squish it. So can you see, look, I've run out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring all of these other little bits that I've got around that side. Yeah, and just bring it around just to make sure that there's enough perfect. Okay, so basically that's how you do it. Now this is where the magic comes in. Now it's really important to have a smoother that is the same height as your cake, okay? So if you haven't got one the same height, then you need to get one or you need to make your, sh your cake shorter. Now, in a perfect world, it'd be really great if we could go around and do this all at once, but I doubt very much whether we can, but we'll give it a go. So what's important is to have your J cloth right next to you in case I have to wipe this down. So what I'm going to do is start making sure that your scraper is going along the bottom all the time because as all the time that's dragging on the bottom, you know that this is at a complete right angle. Okay, first go. Let me get myself a scraper. Scrape off all the excess. Now you don't have to throw that away. You can put that on the top. So scrape off the excess and then we're going to go again. And every time we go round, we sort of catch up with the next layer because it, as they were put, all put on at different thicknesses. Obviously, as we keep going round, we're taking more and more off and we're catching the layers that didn't have as much on as the others. Whoops, that's moved. That's it. Now, the reason that it's so important, as you can see, to have everything really cold and really frozen is because this works so much easier on a hard cake. I'm going to go around just once more, I think. Now, if you've got little gaps, you know, and you, cause you've almost got little, they look like air bubble holes, don't worry too much. Remember that everything is going to be dripped over in the end. There. So I think I've gone round about four times, and I think that's probably plenty enough. And now I'm going to sort out the top. So I'm going to take all of this. Remember, this is not going to be seen at all because it's going to be covered in chocolate. I'm going to take all of my excess buttercream just smooth it over the top And then just make sure that it goes off the edge, yeah? So it's off the edge of the top, okay? So it's almost sitting, overlapping the top edge. And then we're just gonna go around once more. Ready? All this is doing is hopefully tidying up that top edge. That's fine. Now remember it doesn't have to be perfect because that bit's going to be covered. But we just need to make sure that the top and the sides are meeting. Okay, and there you have 
your Neapolitan butter creamed layer cake. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put it back into the freezer for about half an hour so that again it's freezing, freezing cold and then bring it out to do the magical drip. Now here's for the magic part. We're going to put the chocolate on the top of our frozen cake. So I've taken the cake out of the freezer so it's really, really cold and you must do this straight away otherwise um, it doesn't work. So I've melted my milk chocolate and it's really quite runny. Okay, and it's quite warm. Okay, so you don't want it um, to be uh, solid in any way because we want it to, to run down the side of the cake. And again, I've taken smaller piping bags here, but I've put them in the in the glasses again just to help me because I'm going to pour this in. Now I'm going to put them in two separate ones just in case I need some more. I can just go to my next piping bag. Okay. Now remember, this is really, really runny, so we don't want to cut the ends and then move to the cake. It's going to start dripping straight away. So we actually cut it whilst the cake is here because we're going to cut it and make sure that it drips right on the top of the cake. So the idea here is that because the cake's frozen, as we do the drips around the cake, the chocolate will drip to a certain length and by that time, the frozen cake will have stopped it, will have stopped the drip. That's the science. We just do this. Cross our fingers to make sure that it happens. Okay, so I'm going to, let me just take that's it. clip that, take that little bit off. Okay, so the dripping is going to start down the side of the cakes. You can decide how much or how little. It's also a really good way, obviously, of covering up any bits that you didn't like earlier. Now, if you notice, I'm only doing the outsides, the edges, because we fill in the middle afterwards. This is the important part. And because I've got my chocolate at the right consistency, it's really just dripping all on its own down the side of the cake. I'm not even having to work it. Okay. Let me take my second. I'll take that plastic snip away in the in the um, after I've done this bit. Okay, now I'll just go around and just make it look a bit prettier. And then with your leftover chocolate, just puddle it into the middle of your cake. And then just join it up. Now, because this is frozen, obviously, this is all wanting to set very quickly. So you do have to work quite quickly with it. Now, can you see here that it sort of hasn't joined properly? So I'm going to bring the chocolate over and I'm going to make that happen. Can you see? So you can sort of force it a little bit like there, for example. But also, don't forget, we've got our lovely shards of chocolate going around this as well. So the best thing to do is to choose which, which side you like the best and make it your front. So I think that this is going to be my front because I like this side the best. So the best way to do this is put your chocolate, your melted chocolate that you had, you should have some left over. And this is what we're going to use. Chocolate is a fantastic glue. So try and do um, your gluing before the chocolate on your cake has set. And also we're going to use a little bit of this as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is try and get some height into my cake. So I think my first shard is going to sit there. Now, as I say, it's really, really simple to start gluing this stuff together. So I'm literally just using the chocolate that's on the top of the cake as my glue. Okay. 
Now there isn't really any set way of doing this. I'm just sort of going with the flow and seeing what looks best. But I do quite like the idea of it sticking out the side. Okay, so this is starting to set now. So I'm going to go back to my, my bowl of chocolate and just get some chocolate on the edge of where I want to glue it. And then I'm literally just going to stick it to the side of the cake. And you'll be amazed. It just sticks. Chocolate's amazing like that. that's probably yeah I think that's enough and even better it's left all this for me to eat what's really good is actually you can just make this bark and just crack it up and put it into cellophane bags and it makes fantastic Easter presents now I think because it's a great Easter cake as I've said to you it can be used at any time throughout the year but because we're sort of going to use this for Easter I think it's quite nice to add some some Easter eggs as well. Yeah. Perfect. And there you have your super cool, super funky chocolate drip cake.